Y'all ready to have some fun? Not that we're not having fun already. <laughs> I'm all fired up for these kinds of things we're, we're talking fun. about. All right, so here's the first top topic tonight. We're going to have two of them. Um, so I came across a article on the AVS form, and I'll, I'll pop it up here in a second. And it basically had the premise of, like, they feel that home theater is dying. And so I'm just going to pull it up here, and then we'll read it, and then we'll have a discussion. Let me flip over here so I can actually see it. So this is from Art uh, Sonborn. Art, I think, if I remember correctly, wasn't he one of the first to have the eclipse, Christie Eclipse, in his home? Definitely one of the more public. I don't know if the first, mm -hmm. but okay. like probably one of the first names on the forums to announce yeah. it and show that he took off the wall of his house to put it in and everything. Yeah. You're so not that, committed I mean, to home theater unless you're doing that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mentioned that because, I mean, just to give some perspective. So Art is a true enthusiast. He loves the hobby. He's got a killer home theater, but this is his thoughts. He says, uh, of course, my perspective. So the title is, uh, let me scroll up, Home Theater Hobby Dying. He says, of course, my perspective is biased for several reasons. I've been in the hobby since the late 1970s with the Kloss Nova Beam model. One, and in earnest with my first room in 1997. Sometimes we're too close to something to look from the outside, but a few things to me at least point to the hobby is on the skids. Of course, looking at the activity here, talking about the AVS forum, um, is one indicator there used to be way more posts on various subjects and new threads frequently popping up. It seems like there are fewer new products in the hobby, less than in times past. But again, this may be my own take, but there's this showing um, Cedia attendance hovering at circa 30% of that, um, of that one, basically like it's 30% lower than what it was 20 years ago, I think is what he's trying to say. So interesting conversation is home theater dying. So chat, let us know in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? Do you see a decline in home theater? Do you see an incline? Is it kind of stale? Is it stagnant? Love to hear your thoughts and uh, let's dive into it, fellas. I had to get so rid of the banner because it was hiding Rusty's face. Oh. No, I yeah, could see Rusty. Yeah, like, we, Hello. I'm sorry about that. Now looking over the banner. <laughs> I can the barely movie. see you. <laughs> sorry about that. No worries. Hey, <laughs> so what's what's the definition of home theater hobby? I guess just home theater in general. So to me, I don't necessarily deem only a dedicated theater room as home theater. On my channel, I've always been an advocate of building a home theater, whatever space you've got, whether it's a bedroom, whether it's a um, uh, your garage, whether it's a living room setup, whatever that looks like. To me, if you've got surround sound, we're just going to use a real generic term, whether that's a 5.1, 7.1, with Atmos, without Atmos, I still consider that home theater. That's the hobby, um, and that's really, I think, where he was going with that the hobby and as a whole are people moving away from that and, and going to just you know watching movies on their phone or watching it on a tablet or is their tv just good enough those types of things so I, that's kind of my and there's oh my goodness how many pages that thread and this was posted pages. on just a week ago or so six days oh I, I, yeah i was looking at i'm like june 17th but that's when he joined yeah, this was posted six days ago. So, and it's already got 23 pages. So apparently it's a it's a hot topic. People are talking about it. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Is home theater dying? So we're saying home theater needs to have surround sound. So a minimum of 5.1 type so. system to call yeah. it a home theater. I mean, would y'all like? What are your thoughts even on that? I mean, is well, that let's kind just of say dedicated speakers, or do we include sound bars? I mean, I'm even okay with that. <laughs> I'm not as concerned with the semantics of it. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. Like in my living room, I have two speakers and a subwoofer. Is that a home theater? Sure, I mean, it's a whole lot better than my TV. That's for sure. Yeah, because I mean, if we're talking about that, you know, I. I think everybody I know owns at least three or four TVs in their home, maybe more if you start mm -hmm. counting um, mm -hmm. 
well but, yeah without saying about music. it more in a dedicated way because everybody's got a tv and whether, whether you got a soundbar speakers that's not that's like the that's the shallow end of the pool yeah okay so let's limit this to dedicated rooms not you want dedicated rooms alone uh, two-thirds of my audience don't have a dedicated room. I don't I have know, a dedicated i'm not room. but i don't know that that post was directed at two-thirds of your audience i think it's de mm -hmm. directed at the dedicated room people because i, I think do you maybe. think that maybe people are transitioning from dedicated rooms into more of what you say your audience has more of and more media spaces so okay so let let me go back to what he says he says home theater hobby dying and in his post he talks about things like there's less components but as there Love to are, Fly points out, that post was made in the twenty thousand dollar plus forum. Oh, I see. Ultra high end home that. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. I didn't see that part. <laughs> so context. I think we have to put some okay. context right. into there of where it was made, and yeah. that may be coloring the post. Mm -hmm. But I think it's maybe that's where we. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because I think that's a different conversation for sure. I don't know. Yeah. So let's I don't think it's dying from my perspective. Like I, and maybe it's because you, as you get more presence here, but, but not necessarily because I've been on the forums for so many years. I have so many people coming to me on a regular basis asking me, Hey, I'm building my first home theater. You know, I, I I'm soliciting advice from some different people to get some ideas, that kind of stuff. Like that's, okay. that's coming out of the woodwork. And not only, not only people I don't know on the forums, but people I know like from work or from, you know, they've heard through the grapevine or something that I'm in this hobby space mm -hmm. and they just come to solicit ideas. So more now than ever before. Now, granted, as you, maybe that's part of getting to be better known or something to that degree. Mm -hmm. But, but I, all right. When we were growing up, when you were younger, say 20 years ago, how many people did you know that had home theaters? That number was like nil. Mm -hmm. That was it probably yeah, no, as far one. as I knew. Yeah. I know Two, if you, now I know a bedroom. lot of people that have home yeah. theaters and, True. and more all the time, people that don't really even have this like 50 year old guys from work coming over and saying, Hey, like, I think it'd be fun to build a home theater. Give me some advice on that. Yeah. So from my perspective, maybe not dedicated rooms, maybe I general purpose hobby. space. Yeah. But with an AVR, with Atmos, with five mm -hmm. speakers or, a, mm -hmm. you know, nine speakers, that kind of stuff seems to be picking up speed. I think. Yeah. I agree too. Now, because Jonathan brought this up, I want to, imagine what jonathan looks like at work when people come up to them <laughs> hang on hang on wait 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 all right do it again <laughs> why yes how can i help you spend money today and that's just what i imagine him doing when somebody comes up to him and says hey oh, you know anything funny. about home theater and he's just like <laughs> just ready to go oh, when funny. What is your budget? He can bring somebody into the hobby. Now, I don't think Jonathan does that. Jonathan has just this amazing propensity to explain things and allow you to see value. That's yeah. the big thing. And then you start drawing these correlations on your own. It's not Jonathan mm -hmm. that does it. I'm my own worst enemy. He just dangles the carrot in front of me. He's like, hey, look at this thing. <laughs> and then I inevitably am the dog that's perpetually chasing the carrot. So yeah, it is what it I is. I like this thought from Lewis. He says, Oh, sorry, Lewis, wrong one. It jumped on me. It was. Oh man, where did it go? Oh, Which here we one? Go. Sorry, big big Jack. Uh, what happens is when y'all post, it pushes it up. And so then I lose track of it. Big Jack says, good performance is getting cheaper and cheaper. So I can see the 20 plus threads going down. So he's saying, you know, you can get a whole lot more for your money and you don't necessarily have to spend a fortune to get a good sounding home theater. And I agree with mm. that. I think you can definitely mm -hmm. get a lot of bang for your buck. Like you were saying, Jonathan, I think it's all in context. So when mm -hmm. his comment about Cedia, yes, Cedia attendance is down, mm -hmm. but 20 years ago, the internet was nowhere near where mm -hmm. it is now. Look at YouTube. Yeah, for sure. Look at the abundance yeah. of information even on platforms that you don't think would contain a lot of information. And I know a lot of it is not necessarily accurate, but mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. TikTok, Instagram. I mean, mm -hmm. all of these social media platforms that are being utilized to convey information. Cedia is, and I love Cedia, but mm -hmm. Cedia is abhorrently expensive mm -hmm. for companies to go to. And it's expensive yeah. for dealers and 
other people that are involved in the industry to come to because you got to travel, you got to stay mm -hmm. there. And it it's a big mm -hmm. to do. So if you can take in that information in another way mm -hmm. or another avenue, then yeah, I think a lot of people are going to do that. Yeah. So I think it's just a different, we're seeing a migration in the way that people are taking in data or information. It used mm -hmm. to be a lot of in-person and now it's a lot of time what everybody's doing here Sure. Through a screen. Open it up online from mm -hmm. the yeah. convenience of your home and your own boxer shorts or whatever. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to take it there, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I I'm, just, it. I'm just keeping it real. You're man. just, you're trying, just you're the Da Vinci, I'm, you know, I'm you're just wearing, painting the picture. For I'm not everybody. wearing shorts right now. So, I mean, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, how did this get that weird all of a sudden? Oh, man. Bro. I did not, man. He's going to forget, lot, get up to like, pick something up and show us his whitey tidies there in the background. And, <laughs> and on the AVS <laughs> thing, I think AVS is great, but I don't think AVS, and this is, I still, I'm on AVS. I still yeah. think it's a great platform, but I think going? it's, I have feeling there's a, uh, a lot of people have moved away from it. I think. Yeah. I've seen a decline in that. Like even me personally, I was then, I used to be in there all the time. And part of that, I was building my theater. And so I was getting a lot of advice and asking a lot of questions. And I was documenting my journey and what I was doing, the decisions I was making, like you are with your room. But I mean, I rarely, rarely go there. Jonathan's still there quite a bit. Rusty, are you there a lot? Or I mean, I'm rarely. on there. Uh, on AVS forum? Mm -hmm. Rarely. Um, it's whenever um, I've got a problem, I'm troubleshooting, like yeah. just from a... I honestly, I don't know how people find the time to stay on it all the time. Like mm -hmm. it, it is, it can consume a lot of free time and I don't have it, but well, in all fairness, that can be said of anything that can be said of Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, any social platform, um, watching YouTube videos. I, what I'm seeing kind of like what Ryan was saying is that there are just so many other avenues that mm -hmm. people are getting information from and communities that they're finding themselves a part of, whether it's a Facebook group, a discord server, a lot of discord servers out there. We've got one for yeah. M wave and it's really active. Um, so I, I just think there's a lot of different people are being more divided where back in the day, the forums were the place to go for information. Well, and, and think about a lot of other avenues. Think about that forums were a big part of the way people communicated online. Correct. And now that is diverged Correct. into other platforms. Like you brought up one with discord. I mean, mm -hmm. forums and um, what well, IRC, right, mm -hmm. were a big part of how people communicated yeah. on the Internet. And that mm -hmm. has IRC is almost totally gone. I mean, I mm -hmm. still have I'm a weird guy and I still have yeah. some IRC stuff, yeah. um, especially for network engineering. But mm -hmm. the landscape has changed. Mm -hmm. And if you don't adapt to the landscape, you're just going to get left behind. Isn't mm -hmm. IRC pretty darn similar to discord though in it's <clears throat> functionality even i mean yeah. like discord is a prettier version of irc basically yes. a newer version yes but it's still the i mean it's still the similar format so we yes the format of all yeah exactly but if you ask like uh most of our generation what irc is they're going to look at you like a deer in the headlights they have no idea mm -hmm. but you ask a middle-aged man what discord is i can almost guarantee you're going to get a pretty good response of, yeah, I know what Discord is. I have Discord. So mm -hmm. is IRC still active or people still using it? I've yeah. never even heard of IRC. Internet Relay Chat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just used around. it for like downloading things back in the day. I mean, uh, I've heard of bulletin boards. IRC is still around for, and you John can get some pretty good information. Mine's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a bulletin board? With all those things. I'm old, old school yeah. IT. Old, BBS yeah. forum or BBS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I, I keep up with the Discord pretty well, and I feel maybe because it's possible to keep up with the volume of information, I can kind of keep up with the conversation. AVS forum, I, I just can't keep up. There's too much. Well, um, in all fairness, I was trying to find Art's post, and I'm like scrolling back. I'm looking at most recent posts. And I'm like four or five pages in and it's just five days of information, you know, like, so, I mean, there's still a lot of people using that, 
but he was, I think he was saying like, we don't see a lot of new threads and new topics. And Well, and one of the problems with it too, is that you can't have in real time conversation. I mean, you can, but it's difficult mm -hmm. to have a real time conversation with it. Sure. So it, yeah. it's just a different way of communicating. Communication has evolved and it's mm -hmm. changed in how we communicate mm -hmm. through the internet. And I think it's just, AVS is not the prime topic anymore. Location. Mm -hmm. I think Facebook, in all honesty, has taken that over. Oh man, I hope not. I, sure I think it has. I'm not on the what same is... plane as you guys on this thought. Like to me, I like AVS for several reasons. One is that I can go search and find a post that's 20 years old oh, that sure. still has relevance today. And good luck doing that on a chat board. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I fully agree. I'm just saying how people are communicating is mm -hmm. changing. And I'm then, with you. And then there's also the attribute of like AVS forum. I can log in and like, hey, I want to spend an hour to cool down for the evening or something or read while I'm in bed or whatever. I can pick it up and I can put it down. But and I and I use Discord too. I'm on there with you guys. Mm -hmm. But mercy, you get Discord pings and your phone lights up. And then you're like, it's almost like you're on call. You're slave to the Discord server. Mm -hmm. And and that's one reason I kind of stepped out of using Discord so much because it's it's like that that takes over for me. Like Rusty, mm -hmm. you said that takes over. AVS forum takes over. If someone's pinging me and I feel like I've got to respond, that takes over mm -hmm. for me. I yeah. just leave notifications off unless somebody me like direct messages me because it, mm -hmm. it's too much. But hey, on the uh, the other question, the, is home theater dying? I'm thinking about it. For me, proportional to 20 years ago, he's referencing. I know about the same number of people that have a dedicated home theater or a surround mm -hmm. sound as I did back then. Aside from the people that I've met through enthusiast mm -hmm. groups, right? And that, mm -hmm. I feel like that didn't really that that taints the sample. But mm -hmm. um, I feel like now, though, it's so easy to have a good experience without going deep into the hobby. Like you can have a TV and a sound bar, and it can mm -hmm. be pretty darn good relative to twenty years ago, where well. It would have been a CRT and a, yeah, it wasn't that great. There was no sound bar. Or, we thought it was good back then. I guess TV speakers like the the alternatives. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much to offer, but I mean, even the even some of the worst stuff is pretty good these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like somebody mentioned the barrier to entry. Now it, it's I mean, tough to take that from somebody that literally bought white speaker van. Out yeah. of wow. speakers out of a van god uh, hey i had to get a youth van deal somehow hey you gotta do it man <laughs> i'm just kidding that's a that's a good uh interesting thought good thought yeah. good point cool any other thoughts on home theater dying what do you think like i said i i think and, and again i i'm kind of biased because i live in this world i live and breathe it every day well and maybe that's not a bias. I mean, I like Jonathan. I get emails. I get DMs. I get Facebook messages. I get text messages all day, every day saying, you know, either asking questions or saying, thank you for your videos. I just got into home theater. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having so much fun doing it, you know, that type of thing. So I'm seeing more and more and more people expressing interest in the hobby. I mean, my channel itself is home theater and every single month for the past six years my channel has continued to grow every single month there's never been a month where it declined ever so that tells me and the most i've ever had was four thousand new people join my channel in a month that's a lot of people so i mean i didn't know 130,000 people six years ago <laughs> that liked home theater but sure. i do now I don't think it was because of me that they got into home theater, but I was just exposed to, man, there's a bunch of people out there. Problem is we just don't know where they're at. Most people feel isolated and, and maybe that in itself sometimes can skew our perspective thinking the home theaters might, or, you know, home theater might be dying because we don't know anybody that's into this. I and mean, we've talked about that plenty of times that sometimes this home theater hobby can be lonely because we don't, no others in our local area that share that same passion except all three of you guys you all suck because <laughs> y'all have a a great network i mean rusty's had 20 people in his home and i'm sure ryan and, and jonathan both have 
had that and exceeded that. I've never had 20 home theater enthusiasts in my home. Most I've had, I think, is three. And that's because I was trying to multitask. <laughs> was a guy, I'm like, or try to, you know, to kill the two birds with one stone. I had one person there like, hey, Michael, me and my wife would love to come over and check out your JTRs. Cool. Another guy was like, hey, I really want to see the Mad VR. I'm like, can we schedule that at the same time so I can, you know, don't have to give the same spiel two different days? So, but yeah. But yeah, I, I, I believe that it's so. All right. So here's another perspective, too. We also have to take into account where we're at as an economy, too. I mean, we're not in the best position right now. We're not booming. Things are more expensive. Housing market's expensive. Food's expensive. So maybe there are sales might be down for manufacturers. Maybe less people are going to see. I don't know. They are down. You know, I can tell you for, well, it depends on where you look at that. Mm -hmm. Right. So certain demographics and e economic brackets, mm -hmm. it is down. Absolutely. But in other parts, it is massively up. Right. Because it, certain segments are not really affected by anything. It doesn't mm -hmm. really matter what happens in those into the economy. Those market segments aren't really affected in those parts. It is up. And if you go talk to the companies, I think a lot of them will agree that Joe Schmo, your average guy, that market has gone mm -hmm. right off a cliff. Yeah. But to the other end, it is it is up. So we kept hearing ask, too with COVID that the home theater sales were just like through the roof. Oh, they right? exploded. Yeah. And sure. so is down relative to That's down a good with point. COVID or is down relative to before COVID? And I think with context, it comes in of, you got to make sure you back out far enough and look at the graph mm -hmm. at a, enough of a distance. Because if you look in close enough, any mm -hmm. dip, even yeah. if it's minute, looks like a cliff. That makes sense. So if you back out far enough and look mm -hmm. at it over decades, it's probably going to be pretty flat. Yeah. If not increasing. But and I'm seeing this in chat and I agree that I think a lot of the dedicated rooms mm -hmm are transitioning more into media spaces. I think people yeah. don't, a lot of people outside of us crazies, the enthusiasts that want to put a dedicated space in, sure. want the home theater experience, but they don't want to sacrifice a room to it. So you're getting mm -hmm. more of what yeah. Michael's audience has, which is general media spaces. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a big uptick in that. Yeah. I agree. But yeah, and like you said, uh, I like this. Jeff says home theater is the best it's ever been. What's dying for me are affordable, good quality cinema experience. He's talking about his local cinema. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes there, the tickets are overpriced. You know, the experience oftentimes is lackluster. It's too loud or too soft, not enough bass. Can't understand the dialogue. Um, man, there was one time I was watching a movie. I'm trying to remember. There was something like sparkly right behind the screen. So the whole stinking movie, I couldn't take my eyes off this little sparkly. I don't know what it was, but it was it was something either on the screen and it was reflecting back. And so I think it was the screen. It was terrible, but it was one spot, one mm. specific spot on there. So the whole movie, I don't even remember what I was watching, but I'm like, man, this is so did you know your projector in your theater was an ultra short throw? <laughs> on mine no. <laughs> but it was crazy man but yeah so there's a lot of aspects to that but yeah i'm i'm with you guys i don't think home theater as a hobby is dying there might be a decline in dedicated home theater spaces because like you said a lot of people do want to make a, a multimedia room a room that is multifunctional maybe it's a game room and a theater maybe it's a um it's in a living room environment um, so yeah. So to summarize, we're saying home theater isn't dying. AVS so. forum may be. No, I, I don't even, Is I can't say saying? that even, right? Cause isn't AVS forums membership at the highest it's ever been? Like there might be other sources, but look at their member count. Their member is 1.5 million members. Yeah. But it, people, that anybody that signs I've, up. I've never, I, I've never discontinued my membership there. True. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, once you sign up, it never goes down. You have to yeah. look at logins. Yeah. Active users this mm -hmm. month versus active users five years ago or 10 years ago. 
and we're saying that trade show attendance is going down because you can find it all online or a lot of it. Well, and honestly, and kind of like Ryan says, I mean, us as content creators, we're covering that news. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're providing that data for you. I'm interviewing the guys that are making the products and they're giving the announcements at these shows. And so sometimes people are like, I don't need to go. I can, I can pull that information up online and get that. So MW brings up a good point. And this is something that I think is really important whenever you're researching topics mm -hmm. is you need to look at it as per capita. Mm -hmm. okay. So population is increasing. Disposable income is increasing, but home theater doesn't follow Moore's law. So there's for marketing, the value realization is difficult. But how I took that comment is if the population is increasing, and mm. the interest was the same level, theoretically, you could derive mm. that we should see more home theaters, mm -hmm. theoretically, because there's more people. Shouldn't you? I don't think disposable income is increasing. I think that's a, I think it's probably decreasing from depends a young on, person's perspective. Depends on the market, depends it's on the market and the segment and who you're looking at. Well, I tell my kids all the time that I think they are the first generation. I'm 44 to get perspective there. I think my kids will be the first generation where it won't be as easy for them to have like a father working and a mother caretaking yeah. kids at home. Yeah. 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 Like the traditional American family for what that's worth, I think will be harder for them than it has ever been in previous generations for within reasonable history. Um, because I think there's a lot of things coming. This is a whole different conversation, but we got mm -hmm. a lot of automation coming. It's going to take away a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. You've got inflation stuff. That's money printing. Is, uh, we're going to get political here, but there's a lot, there's a lot of risk factors mm -hmm. for them not having as easy a life as, as I did, or my folks did, or their folks did. Um, they're kind of converging on this youngest generation. So to me, you know, there's worldwide competition in their job market. It's not just their local neighborhood or their community. Now it's all remote work can take place from all over the world, not just the local city. There's just a lot of factors there. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we'll keep it out of the political context, but, mm -hmm. but, but mercy, I, I don't think disposable income is going up in our lifetimes. I think it's going down for people. It will go down. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm looking at people that are making way more than, than we did 20 years ago, for sure. I was broke as a goat, you know? Well, sure. Yeah, but it, cost of living is also way more, and they're disproportionately, yeah. cost of living is rising. Uh, yeah, and it, that may be true, too. Maybe income is up, but their expenses are higher. I mean, and also, Michael, you ought to also consider that you're like 20 years older than the last, you know, the check-in. So your, your wages should go up in life. That's the, yeah. that's the idea. Right, sure. But and relative to that son, for young people. I'm looking at my son and my daughter. Here's an example. Mm -hmm. My son is 24. My daughter is 22. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at their income going, my, my daughter makes like literally $10,000 less starting out as a new teacher than my wife of 21 years. Mm -hmm. I'm going, how is that even possible? You know, that's crazy. That's an mm -hmm. incredible salary for a 20 stinking two-year-old. Mm -hmm. You know, and my son, he's making good money with my sister. He works for her and her husband. And then he's got his TikTok side business. So he's hustling over there. I'm going, we didn't have those opportunities, you know, 20 years ago. I was mowing grass and, you know, and doing things like that, trying to make, I was flipping some speakers for a hundred bucks here and a hundred bucks there, you know? So I don't, I don't know. There's more opportunities nowadays. For people to to succeed, I don't know. I, I guess that's. Can I a, can I take this thing a a, a, a little bit strange direction just for yeah, a brief moment? Be, and, yeah. All right, here comes the conspiracy theories. No, none of that. We'll oh, okay. Man, that's too bad. <laughs> Go ahead. That? Share screen. This this is this is for me. me can you guys see my screen? screen? Give me a second, Rusty. I'm gonna get rid of this banner. There you go, brother. Oh, thank you. And I can of, see you better oh, let now. Me, let me make it bigger. I won't be able to see the chat, but now I can see. Dude, this is real time. Check that yeah, out. Yeah, have you guys checked this out? It's it's Never really pretty wild. This. So, this so like, wild. look at this kind of thing. The median income now is $39,000, right? 
right where my mouse is moving. Do you see my mouse moving? Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. down in the middle. All right, gotcha. Yep. 39, 4. The median income 24 years ago was $8,000 less. Okay. Look at the median new home in the year 2000 mm-hmm. versus the median oh, new home yeah. now. Wow. Yeah, Way out of step. The car, that's average the new awesome. car is $50,000. Yes. Okay. Average new car 20 years ago was $22,000. Like that's not a good direction. We're going the wrong direction. Were saying, y'all were saying the income is not increasing. Income is increasing, absolutely. Well, look, but not at the same the rate outgo, as right. cost. the outgo is increasing exponentially. Yeah. And while we're here, you want to see some other crazy stuff. I'll 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 back off this. This is not what the oh, show is about, but it's crazy. crazy. Look at the savings per family. This is this is in America on average, twelve thousand dollars savings per family. Right. Look at the personal debt per citizen. Like, what are we doing here? But I'm going to play devil's advocate here. There is a lot of variables and factors that are not being considered in this. I don't know. This thing is... uh... My point is, is that personal financial decisions and stuff are not being considered. And there's a lot of direction and education and things and choices that people are making that are directly influencing their outcomes and buying choices that you're just seeing the result of everything you're not seeing the why well and that's kind of what we're just looking at though right just but, the result I, I, yes i mean how how can you look at this and i don't mean to be a debbie downer here and this mm-hmm. isn't the point of the podcast so i don't want to get lost <laughs> on this, but, it's all good. but how can you how can you look at this and be like optimist when we have like debt i'm not taxpayer? saying i'm an optimist my point is especially on the cars and stuff is I think a lot of that is personal choice. There are many cars that you can choose from that are not fifty thousand dollars. I mean, look at look at what other countries and things are doing with cheap cars. There was a who was it Toyota that just launched an eleven thousand dollar pickup truck. Nice, um, nice. I think well, a lot of this is based on personal choice and personal decision and keeping up with the Joneses, and that's where a lot of your debt comes from. I'm not saying the housing is that way, mm-hmm. but and I don't want to get into a lot of this because that's not what this stream should be. All I'm saying here is that it goes back to what I'm, what I was saying about the graph. It's very easy to look in on something. And I know I'm not saying we're looking in here, but if you don't consider all of the variables and why things are happening, you can find yourself getting a really a view that looks like this Mm -hmm. instead of that looks like this and not considering, well, how did we get here? And why? And what is causing these to ha- these things to happen? So I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. simply saying, why? I feel like a couple things will happen. I mean, we're so off topic here. I'll just shut up after this. But <laughs> but if we, that's the third it. time you said that, by the yeah. way. Yeah, I keep saying it. But but check this out: debt per citizen, a hundred thousand. Debt per taxpayer, two hundred sixty-six thousand. So that means, like, if my wife and I were to come clean on national debt thing, like look at that amount of money, like just the two of us that we would owe. How many people do you know that have that kind of money to cough up? And then, you know, here's college tuition between 2000 and now. And like the things are trending harder. That's all. I, I think things are trending harder for our young generation. And I hope it doesn't, I hope I'm wrong on that, but that's what I see. And then you add the complications. You add the complications we talked about. AI is going to be in the next 10 to 15 years, taking over a lot of, like truck driver jobs, taxi Mm -hmm. driver jobs, automation. They're talking about 30% of those jobs will be just gone Mm -hmm. in 15 years, just like not gone. And then they're like, they'll say, well, you know, you have to have people to do technicians to fix that kind of stuff. But, but the reality is it's not a one for one. So what do you, how do you manage that? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, and the last thing I'll say, because Brian brings up something about personal choice, I'm not saying that's what everything is. I'm simply Mm -hmm. using that as a something to consider. Absolutely. There's a lot of factors that go into this. It's just personal choice is one of them. Yeah. It's not like what Mally says. He says, um, I'm making the most I've ever made in my entire life. No student loans, but I've spent 40,000 on major home renovations, finally getting to purchase my home theater gear this year. So, you know, we're seeing both. I mean, we, there's definitely people that are worse off shape now than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, so we're seeing both sides, but, but yeah, I mean, I like the perspective. I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at, you know, something like, um, you know, the big picture and Mm-mm. seeing where we're at. 
And Jonathan, yeah. you did good. I mean, we got some active chat now. Yeah, dude, they're they're like. Thank you for backing up my conjecture, though, because that's boy, what Jonathan I was trying is to back. He needs his own podcast on finance. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. But you don't have to be an economist to like just look around and yeah, expenses it's, are it's outpacing tough, no income it's tough right now for all of us. So what's the answer? Buy some new gear. That's what Scott says. All right.